repainting of functional hydrogel. Uh, here is the outline. Um, basically, three parts will be included. Uh, let's go to the, the background first. Uh, as we all know that uh, hydrogel has been uh, widely used in many fields such as biomedicine, flexo flexible electronics, soft uh, robotics, uh, owing to their high water content uh, and the excellent mechanical properties, uh, biocompatibility, conductivity, and so on. So uh, hydrogel has been uh, widely um, investigated. If you search on the website, you will find uh, uh, extensive publications uh, and uh, uh, most of this uh, work uh, during these publications, uh, the um, hydrogels were prepared by uh, traditional method. Uh, their shapes uh, are like uh, sheets, sweeps, or bricks. However, when they faced the emerging um, applications such as uh, sensing uh, soft drop takes, uh, uh, something like that. Uh, some specific shape or uh, complex structure will be necessary. So, how to manufacture hydrogel with desirable structure is uh, uh, had become a big challenge. Uh, then, uh, three printing uh, was employed to uh, combine with uh, hydrogel, and a new term, three D bioprinting, had been developed in the past years due to the high potential. Uh, of 3D printing of hydrogels in biomedical and uh, uh, tensile engineering, etc. Um, so the, the, the red corner is a um, typical picture of 3D bioprinting. Uh, so that method is called uh, uh, DIW, direct ink writing. Basically, for 3D bioprinting there, um, the, uh, it involves three parts, biomaterials, active factor, and uh, uh, cells. The general process uh, is you need the, the information, you need the model, then you can print it, uh, and after that you can do the cell culture. Uh, as for the um, biomaterials for 3D bioprinting, uh, there are several types. Among these uh, uh, materials, hydrogel, uh, due to their high water content uh, and uh, comparable uh, properties with the tissue and our uh, human organ, so it has been rec uh, recognized as an ideal um, candidate materials. Um, however, uh, in order to meet uh, uh, more and more requirements uh, from the um, uh, different applications like tissue engineering, labor on chip, uh, drug delivery, especially with the increase of high complex uh, structure, new approaches and uh, materials are highly desired. Uh, this is why we started the reprinting of hydrogels uh, uh, several years ago. Uh, and in the following, I'm going to share three three printing uh, hydrogels we have done in the past three years. The first one is uh, uh, DRW three printing of a uh, compatible hydrogel. Uh, just we uh, talk about about that uh, commonly three printing of um, uh, hydrogel uh, were prepared through combination of uh, synthetic polymers and uh, natural macromolecules which have been widely used. Uh, actually, um, some excellent advances have been made uh, in uh, uh, biomedical applications like tissue engineering, bone repair, uh, vascular regeneration, and so forth. Uh, well, there are still some drawbacks, such as for the IWs printing. Uh, the hydrogel um, usually are poor mechanical performance. Well, for stereolithography based uh, suit printing, uh, this without the hydrogel, uh, they had exhibited a good mechanical property, but they usually use UV light, which is uh, harmful to cell. And uh, usually there are some uh, re uh, unreacted uh, um, monomers left in the hydrogel, which is uh, also uh, uh, toxic, uh, toxic uh, to cell. So developing um, the printing of uh, hydrogel with better mechanical property and uh, good biocompatibility uh, uh, was well. 
So here is our strategy, which is pure, uh, pure uh, physical cross-linking. Uh, here we use PVA and uh, uh, carotene. Uh, we know that PVA is a famous, famous material which can become hydrogel after uh, freedom sawing treatment. Uh, and uh, the uh, carotene here, uh, it plays two uh, roles. One is a uh, bioactive materials which can provide the final hydrogel with good biocompatibility. And the other is to improve the rheology of the ink to make it uh, suitable for the IW printing. Here uh, is the rheology of the, uh, the ink. Uh, actually, for the IW printing, rheology of the ink uh, is quite uh, critical. We knew that uh, for PVA solution, uh, it's not good enough to be the W3 printing ink uh, uh, because uh, even the PVA concentration is very high. It was, uh, it's, it's uh, viscosity is very high, but uh, um, it cannot be a two days through the nozzle to uh, form a good uh, filament. Uh, well, once uh, uh, the mm, carotene uh, was added, the uh, hybrid become viscosity, uh, vis elasticity ink. It means it uh, uh, exerted uh, uh, good shear shining and uh, rapid recovery. Uh, this allows us to build the structure with uh, high complexity, uh, like uh, uh, these samples used that we printed um, in our work. Uh, actually, the filament um, um, uh, prepared by the DAW technology, uh, it um, diameter can be varied uh, uh, by varying the moving speed and uh, extrusion flux. Um, if we use the, 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 the uh, needle with uh, smaller uh, diameter, the uh, filament diameter can be very small. It can be less than 100 micrometer. Um, um, well, after uh, five sets of reading sawing uh, treatment, the relevant reprinted object will become hydrogel with uh, moderate uh, mechanical uh, properties. We also found it had um, good uh, swelling resistance and uh, cell viability. That means uh, uh, the without hydrogel uh, exerted uh, a good biocompatibility as well. Uh, when we finished the work, we compared the uh, um, mechanical properties uh, uh, of our case with others, with, with others reported in the reference. Uh, we found that uh, ours is in the middle level. Uh, actually, the fact is, uh, you can see that for all these reprinted hydrogels, uh, their mechanical perform performance uh, um, quite um, Poor, uh, if you compare it with those prepared by the traditional methods. Uh, for the traditional one, uh, if I'm right, the best, uh, the tensile strength of the best should be larger than 50 micro uh, pascal. Um, so uh, for 3 printing uh, hydrogel, uh, it might be necessary to develop some uh, new uh, hydrogels with uh, ultra high strength and uh, toughness. Uh, here is uh, our strategy. Uh, we named it dual physical cross linking, uh, which are PVA cross uh, crystallization network and uh, uh, calcium ionic network, like uh, the figure uh, shoes. Uh, we prepared the ink with PVA and uh, calcium. Then we printed uh, the ink uh, with the W uh, uh, technology. And then um, we can, um, and then um, the, the printed object can be uh, treated by the freezing sorting, uh, which can form uh, build the first the PVA crystallization network. Uh, after that, it can be immersed in a sodium citrate solution to uh, form the second ionic network. Then we can get a DBC hydrogel with uh, uh, very high uh, mechanical performance. So the first thing for this DBC hydrogel is deal the rheology investigation to get the ink with good printability. 
And the final DPC Harjil, uh, their mechanical property are very excellent. With the tensor strings higher than 12 microbasca at a uh, elongation of uh, 300 percentage and the high modulus. We also cal calculated the uh, fracture work and the toughness, they are both excellent. So the right, um, the right plot here, uh, we compare the, the mechanical properties of our work with uh, those uh, reported in reference. Uh, as you can see that ours is the best. Uh, by testing the string stress, uh, uh, we can know what happened to the energy deception uh, of the hydrogel during uh, strategy. Uh, so here is for the uh, SPC hydrogel uh, with a single physical crossing and hydrogel. We can find that different networks, uh, uh, they uh, contributed to the energy deception differently. Uh, actually, the PVA uh, crystallization network, uh, uh, it didn't uh, contribute much to the uh, energy deception. Uh, the most of it, the uh, energy deception uh, came from the other two, which, is, which are ionic network and the sorting out uh, effect. Uh, well, uh, the energy deception of DPC hydro, it is uh, the uh, synergistic effect of these two network and uh, the sorting out effect. Uh, based on this result, uh, we can find that uh, at the very uh, at the small string, the deformation is elastic. Uh, well, at the larger uh, string, uh, it is uh, plastic. Uh, our recovery tests uh, have come from the days uh, we. Uh, a sample which had uh, uh, stretched for 50%. Um, uh, after that, it is, was studied uh, uh, for three hours. So we can find that the residual strain uh, can be less than uh, 5%. It means that the hydro uh, had recovered almost uh, to its uh, original. Uh, usually, for double uh, network hydrogel, they uh, choose high toughness. So we did the tearing test uh, here for the uh, DVC hydrogel. Uh, we found that the DVC hydrogel um, actually uh, uh, had the high toughness. Uh, moreover, uh, as you can see here, for the tearing tests, uh, during the tearing tests, we found that the crack of the hydrogel is not along the filament direction. Uh, this means that um, uh, there should have good interface bonding in the DPC hydrogel. Uh, another uh, unique character for our DPC hydrogel is that we can do secondary shift. Uh, by the local DPC strategy. Uh, just we, like we talk about that, uh, we build a, a um, we build a, uh, we build a two networks uh, uh, by the uh, post, post treatment after printing. So we can make the network building at any uh, specific position we want. Uh, or like in uh, on the tail or the fin, then we can get the the shape we want. Um, well, the fine part is uh, uh, the three printing of gradient hydrogel. Um, in nature, there are many gradient uh, structures which uh, has great uh, advantage in surface patterning, in friction and accuracy, attention, something like that. Uh, so, uh, developing bio-inspired gradient, uh, gradient hydrogel are um, uh, highly attractive. Uh, of course, there are some publications that have been uh, have targeted to achieve the gradient hydrogel, but uh, we found that the their method cannot achieve the the gradient structure structure in three D uh, in three dimensional. So, what we did is that uh, uh, grayscale image induced the DLP3 printing um, of gradient hydrogel. Here we used the uh, uh, DLP3 printing, which is different uh, uh, to the uh, DW one. Uh, 
Uh, the RB thirteen is kind of still isography based on uh, projection approach. Approach. Uh, our method is to control the image uh, grayscale. The grayscale is different. Then the light is different. Different light will uh, result in different cross linking uh, in the photosensitive dressing. And finally, their performance will be different. Um, so uh, this can be uh, different water content, uh, different potential strengths, and different kinds of models. With this different, with these differences, uh, we um, when we put the samples into the water, uh, there will have uh, phase separation happened. That means uh, the transparency of the the, the um, head gel in different positions will be different. Then we can get our patterns on the head gel, like the dot array or the strip array. Uh, this is the logo of our institute uh, uh, pattern on the uh, high gel. Uh, as you can see that uh, they are uh, in high resolution with a feature size of about uh, uh, 70 micrometers. We also found that the patterned um, letters uh, on the high gel, uh, they can be reversibly observed uh, during the hydration and the dehydration uh, Cycles. These cycles can be several uh, letters that are still very clear. Mm. And uh, also, any other patterns uh, uh, such as uh, text or Chinese uh, calligraph or, or some different masks or drawings can be patterned on the head gel. Uh, red corner is um, mm, uh, that kind of is a, a quick response code of our group, which can be easily recognized by a cell phone if you want. Uh, importantly, we can construct the patterning in uh, uh, 3D hand geo architectures, uh, as you can see here. Uh, uh, moreover, given the manufacturing process, uh, processes with layer by layer of the printing, we can actually uh, make the pattern, uh, different pattern in different layers. Uh, as you can see in the bottom, uh, here we put uh, different letters in different layers. So when uh, uh, what droplet uh, was placed on the surface, the water will um, permit it uh, uh, to the seed. Well, uh, to the different depths, the different uh, numbers will show up. Uh, it, it was just like the um, uh, in encryption in uh, security technology. Uh, well, in the final, I'd like to say that uh, the grayscale DRP printing um, is very easy to be used for 4D printing. Uh, the only thing we need to do is uh, just design the grayscale image uh, just like this. Uh, okay, uh, here is uh, the, the summary. We have achieved uh, uh, several head gels uh, with the W and the DRP 3 printing. These head gels exhibited uh, um, some uh, uh, good uh, performance like uh, biocompatibility and um, uh, ultra high strength, toughness, and uh, gradient. We believe that um, combining this um, excellent head gel with the advanced uh, manufacturing methods reprinting, we can make something uh, very useful uh, in the near future. Uh, we are working on it now. Uh, and finally, uh, I'd like to take the chance to, to thank uh, all the contributors and contribution uh, from uh, the group, uh, especially uh, Mr. Pan Jiang, who is a um, PhD uh, student in this group. Who, uh, most of the work we just talked about uh, was done by him. Uh, he is supposed to uh, take his uh, uh, PhD defense uh, uh, in two months. Luckily, he will get his uh, PhD soon. Um, uh, also, I'd like to thank the financial support received from uh, these organizations. And uh, thank you.